Welcome to Huff Goes to the Movies. My name is Eric Huff from the second. Most people call me Huff. Some people know that I love going to the movies. Fast X hits theaters on May 19th as the 11th installment in the Fast and Furious franchise. Every week I've been revisiting one of these films in order of its release. And with this being the sixth week of the Toretto Tuesday series, it is now time to talk about Fast and Furious 6. This was the fourth film in the franchise directed by Justin Lin, the fourth film in the franchise written by Chris Morgan. And once again, this film sort of follows in the altered bit of chronology of the series. This takes place before Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. So once again, Sung Kang is here uh, playing the role of Han. Uh, this takes place after the massively successful Fast Five, which I think many people see as sort of the high point of the Fast and Furious series. Fast and Furious 6 really does sort of continue with the big action set pieces that they started to really dive into in Fast Five. This time the crew has been recruited by Hobbs, played once again by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, uh, to take down Owen Shaw, a terrorist who has been knocking out different financial places and different tech centers all across Europe. So the crew sort of reunites in London and they attempt to take out Shaw's crew, who of course sort of serve as evil doppelgangers of themselves. Um, Fast and Furious 6, I think, is the one movie in this franchise that I think people went into without any real bit of surprise. With the first three films sort of being low-tier B-movies and the fourth film being a bit of a soft reboot, I think going, I think coming out of Fast Five, audiences were kind of surprised at just how big an event they made of that film. So Fast and Furious 6 is really the first entry in the series where I think audience expectations were sort of perfectly set for the film they got. Um, this film, much like Fast Five, it's big, it looks good, there are these really well-staged action set pieces and chases. The larger-than-life action is, you know, at this point, it had already been introduced in the franchise, and so I think that people are a little less surprised now. The crew really has a well-formed dynamic. We sort of understand the, the pecking order of who's calling the shots. We understand which members of the crew specialize in certain fields. We understand why certain members of the crew might pair up together for certain side missions. And I think that Fast and Furious 6 does a really good job of taking the formula that worked with the ensemble of Fast Five, and they find ways to switch up who is sort of pairing off with who for the side quests of this film. Now, this film does start to strain believability. There is the sort of big action piece near the end with the giant plane and the world's longest runway. And then, of course, there is the whole tank scene that involves Vin Diesel sort of flying through the air to catch Michelle Rodriguez. And oh yes, this is the film that brought Michelle Rodriguez back. We thought that she died in Fast and Furious, the fourth film. But this film, it reveals that she was not dead. She was just in a coma and she lost her memory. So now she's working with the bad guys and now we see the crew on a mission to try to bring her back. And honestly, I love Fast and Furious 6. I know that Fast 5 is seen as the high point, but to me, Fast and Furious 6 is, is not far behind in that. I mean, if I were ranking them right now, I think Fast and Furious 6 would sort of be a very close second place from Fast 5. As the series progresses, I will certainly probably have my mind changed on that, but for now, I really do love Fast and Furious 6. And a fun note is that my wife, who had never seen any of these movies before, this was the first film that she saw. She actually went to the theater to see it. She was on a date or, or something unimportant like that, but I think that she was able to buy into this family, this crew, uh, pretty quickly. And I think she was blown away by a lot of the big action set pieces that take place. And so Fast and Furious 6 is one of those movies that I think when people talk about how this franchise might have eventually jumped a shark, it's weird to see them mention this one because I think this is the one that has just enough room for believability. I think that Fast and Furious 6 really ups the ante on the action here. I love that as Justin Lin has come back for these films. You can sort of see it on camera just how much more comfortable he's getting with sort of these big 
elaborate set pieces and they look so good. Now, obviously, when you have things like tanks and planes and things flying through the air, you do need to use a, a bit more CGI, a bit more visual effects, but the way that these things are staged and some of the, the shots that they get that involve um, things that are in camera are breathtaking. I really enjoy how they start that highway sequence that involves the tank. And credit to the actors here, because I don't know how much of the actual stunt driving they're doing, but they're committed, man. And some of the stuff that they have these stunt people do, if it's not the actors themselves, I mean, it's, it's really something. Major, major credit to performers like Gal Gadot and Tyrese, who I don't think we necessarily associate with. Yeah, they get to have like these big action moments, but the way that they perform in some of these is a lot of fun. And Owen Shaw as a villain, I think is kind of underrated. As future films would sort of follow this character and his family, I think that he's been a bit relegated to the back seat, but I think that in this movie, Owen Shaw is a great foe for the crew. And I like how his crew matches up with our crew, the family, if you will. And of course, the family aspect here is front and center. Vin Diesel says it a whole lot, and it certainly doesn't get boring here. I actually really enjoy it, and the decision to bring Michelle Rodriguez back as Letty, I think, makes for a pretty interesting dynamic here. In Fast Five, we saw how they don't really focus on any of the street racing, but with Fast Six, they do sort of come back to that. We do get a glimpse of London's street racing scene, but it doesn't really look like it's defined by any real rules and they don't really follow up on that. I think that Fast and Furious 6 works as a big action movie. I think that it continues what worked in Fast 5 and the more time that this crew spends together, I think the better their chemistry becomes. And so I love seeing the, the growth of, <laughs> of Roman Pierce played by Tyrese. I love seeing his dynamic with Ludacris grow throughout these films and so Fast and Furious 6 is one of my favorites in the franchise. I think it is a standout when you compare it to some of the big superhero movies that we were getting that year, especially films like Iron Man 3. I think that these movies go toe to toe with their Marvel counterparts as far as big tentpole releases. And so I'm excited to eventually go on to Fast and Furious 7 where Justin Lin actually is not in the director's chair. Once again, I think that him and Chris Morgan have um, found the right tone for this series and they continue it here. The action is bigger. The action is just slightly better. I just love to see how comfortable they've gotten in this world. I love that they find ways to continue to elevate the stakes, elevate the action. And you know, this concludes sort of the original run that those two had in this series because after this, James Wan comes on to direct Furious 7, but for the work that they've done from Tokyo Drift until Fast and Furious 6, honestly, major kudos to them. They really put a stamp on this. They really made this franchise their own. And obviously, because people know what happens in the later films, the post credit scene here, when we saw it in the theater in 2013, was an absolute mind F. I mean, you talk about being able to discern who the hardcore fans were in that audience. It was something pretty special, and I'm glad that they found a really cool way to continue that in the next film. If you know, you know. I don't need to spoil that. The trailers usually do that for you. Uh, but yes, if I had to give Fast and Furious 6 a rating, I would give it a 4 out of 5 stars. But that is just me. Guys, what are your thoughts on Fast and Furious 6? Where do you think it compares with the rest of the franchise? Join me in the comments and let me know. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That certainly always helps. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon. That way you can stay up to date on everything that I've got going on here. Once again, my name is Eric Huffman II. Most people call me Huff. Salute me familia. I'll see you at the movies. Peace.